Good morning. Today we are reading from Psalm 93. And the beautiful thing about the Psalms is that the same, many of the Psalms for, let's say, five or eight Psalms in a row, discusses the same topic. And here it talks about the resurrection of Jesus, the reign and the rule of God in the earth. Yesterday we've mentioned that we look at the beautiful joy that comes in the morning, which is talking about the resurrection, the love of God that is in the morning, pointing to Jesus being raised from the dead and how faithful God is towards us, how that will remove wickedness from the earth and only bring what God has dreamt to this earth. And that it then defines at the end of Psalm 92 that the beauty and the righteousness that God brings because there's no wickedness in him is eternal life for us as humans as demonstrated in Jesus Christ. We now go to Psalm 93 and we're going to see more or less the same thing there. I hope that these messages, and this is the idea that I have with these devotionals and as we see this come forth from the text, encourages you that you will have hope in this world, that you will not feel despair. Because if you look at what's happening in the world, we are so quickly focused on the negative. You know, if there's a snake on my property here. that ca It can be a little snake just this big in the corner of the yard there, harming no one. But I will not find rest until that snake is removed. There might be so many other places that's safe on this property, but my mind would go to that because uh, I think it can harm my life. And it could uh, be harmful. It could be a poison snake. It might not even be a poison snake, but I will not find rest because I don't feel safe. And I think that is what happens with us. God has done so many good things in the earth through Jesus in Christianity, right through the world. He's done so many good things, but we are focused on the negative. I think because we don't feel secure. The more secure we can feel on account of the finished work of Jesus, the more we'll find our mind and our thoughts and our heart and our eyes focus on the good. I also want to say, the more you see the negative, the more insecure you feel. The more secure you feel, the less you'll worry about the negative because you'll know you are secure. I remember flying an airplane and I would look outside of the window and I saw a piece of paint is off, uh, uh, peeled off on the wing of the plane. And then I would look at that, but that didn't make me feel insecure because I know that, play, that piece of paint is not what makes the airplane fly. You know, if I would see a tear in the metal, then I'll be worried about it because that could mean that this, you know, can tear further and so forth. It could be that the structure of the plane is not intact. But if I see a little bit of paint or a little mark there, that, that would mean nothing to me. Why? Because my mind is at rest and I know I'm secure. But if I didn't feel secure, if I felt insecure, then I would, if I was already thinking this airline is not a good airline, you know, then I would look at that little bit of paint there and I would say, oh my goodness, and it will become a big thing. In the same way, when we can understand how secure we are in Christ, in this earth, if we can understand how secure this earth is and the future of the world in Jesus, because Jesus is Lord of heaven and earth, and his plan is to bring heaven's rule to earth, and he has been doing that and will continue to do that to the point that this earth explode into eternal life. If we can see that, I think we will be less aware of the negative that there is in the world. So let us read Psalm 93 verse 1. The Lord reigns. He's robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. Indeed, the world is established, firm, and secure. Isn't that beautiful? What does the psalm writer say? He says, the world is secure. Why? Because the Lord is robed in majesty. Now, isn't Jesus robed in majesty? Yes, he is. So let us see that. Let us see that the man, Jesus, has been raised from that robed in majesty. What is majesty? It's the fullness of God bodily. 
and he's armed with strength. What is the strength that Jesus has been armed with? With the strength of eternal life, with the strength of an unending life. He is in the order of Melchizedek. Nothing bad can happen to him. Indeed, on account of this, the psalm writer says, the world is established, firm, and secure. Verse 2, your throne was established long ago. You are from all eternity. Now listen to verse 3 here, and I just want to give a short explanation of the word see in the Bible. The word see many times talk about chaos or the enemy or turmoil. You think of uh, there was darkness on the face of the deep. You think of something somber, negative, destruction, and so forth. If, it, if the words um, the words that is used and the earth was without form and void is also used of a city after a war and darkness was on, upon the face of the deep. You are seeing the seas of chaos and despair coming through a place. Now, the seas have lifted up. Lord, the seas have lifted up their voice. The seas have lifted up their pounding waves. Now here, listen to what he says here. And this is a beautiful, beautiful explanation of what has happened from Adam in the earth and what has happened in Christ and what will happen. He says, God, you lifted up, but the seas, they've also lifted up. Lord, the seas have lifted up their voice. What is the voice of the seas? Is the voice that we find in Psalm 92. But Lord, wickedness springs up like the grass, you know. The seas have lifted up their voice. The seas has, has lifted up their pounding waves, unending wickedness happening over and over. But listen to verse 4. Mightier than the thunder of the great waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea, the Lord on high is mighty. Isn't it beautiful? We found death pounding at this earth. We found sin and destruction pounding. We even found the voice of the deep speaking when Jesus was in the grave, but mightier, mightier than the chaos of the world is our Lord. And he was raised from the dead, mightier than the thunder of the great waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea. The Lord on high is mighty. you your status, Lord, stands firm. Holiness adorns your house. Now listen to this for endless days. I want to tell you, you are safe as a human, as a person. You are safe. Not even the grave can threaten you. This earth, this cosmos is safe on account of Jesus you might say, but Bertie, you know, don't you really understand? Listen to what Psalm 92 says here. Senseless people do not know, fools do not understand, that though the wicked spring up like the grass and the evildoers flourish, they will be destroyed forever. Hallelujah. Isn't it beautiful? Now, I don't say hallelujah in the destruction of any person because the Bible says it is, God does not rejoice over the death of one unrighteous. But what we are happy about is that the earth will be filled with the glory of the Lord and all of the goodness of God shall be seen in everything. And we, we can look at the grass and we can say it springs up. Wickedness might spring up in the earth, but we are like the cedars of Lebanon. The church is like that palm tree, and we will even in old age bear fruit, which is a sign of and a shadow of foreshadowing eternal life promised by Jesus or promised in Jesus by the Father. Amen. Well, we've come to the end of our week's devotionals. Let us pray. Father, I want to thank you for your faithfulness. I want to thank you that, Lord, you reign, that you are robed in the majesty of eternal life. Lord, you are robed indeed and seated high above all death and destruction, and the earth is established, the world is established, firm and secure. 
Lord, thank you that we can know that we are not at a place where we are tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, by the waves of the sea, the waves of the turmoil of this world, but we stand in the stability of Jesus' endless life, which is love towards us. And then we, as a people who believe, we are already part of the new physical creation that is on this earth, a place where wickedness is removed by your faithful love in us, by your doing. Father, I pray for everybody that is listening to this devotional. I thank you, Lord, that all of us, I include myself in that, may have an enlightened mind to see what you're doing in this earth through Jesus more and more. Amen.